Well, it's sort of rideable. It kick starts. Got the side covers and air, air breathers or air cleaners yesterday. And uh, they're kind of key because the way the carbs are jetted, you've got to have those air boxes on there. So if you don't have them on, it's like putting an air pod on. You've got to rejet in order to get enough fuel to the engine. Obviously Yummy! This is the carburetor that was on the six horse. It, it, yeah. No wonder it wouldn't start. And believe it or not, I did get the needle out. Wasn't easy, but I got it out. Wow, what a mess. Well, I guess we'll clean all that crap up. That is why we don't introduce water to these engines or leave them sit outside. That's what, that's what happens right there. Let's see what happens after we clean it up what we've got. All right, gang, here's where we're at. I had to chase the thread on the base, which is now back in the carburetor cleaner to clean the threads up enough to get the emulsion tube out. Got the emulsion tube out. You guys saw the mess that was inside that carburetor. Well, the float's fine, but you can tell the oxidization is concentrated right here and that needle is not coming out so this upper carb body is not usable but I have a little dilemma I need that shaft that is a special shaft for this engine then if we take another look At orientation of how the carburetor mounts that's another issue mind you this is uh, for the uh, motor on mini Lord so if I line the holes up the way they're supposed to be you can see a very obvious difference there so what I was going to do was to just simply take this shaft out stick it in this upper carb body, well actually this whole carburetor because it's fine but now I can't do that so option C at this point now is take the carburetor that is on the engine from any Lord that is running and hope that it can be resurrected but just wanted to show you guys even though they're the same size venturi you know this holds the same size it has the same size jet metering screw mounting holes everything's in the same place with the exception of this being rotated about 30 degrees uh, that just keeps me from being able to just take one from a horizontal shaft which is what this is off of and using it on Mini Lord's engine. So sometimes there's a fail. And in this event, it's a fail. Let's just keep our fingers crossed that when we go to get into the carburetor that is on Mini Lord right now, that it's going to work out and it's going to work out just fine. So keep your fingers crossed. We'll get that one off. Take a look at it. I was just packing things up, getting ready to head in. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to see if I can't get that needle out. I'll tilt the camera up. And it's not on the holder anymore. So, I just took the center punch, just gently tapped it a few times. 
and I popped it and it moved a little bit knocked it back down lather rinse repeat did that a few times and it came out so I may be able to use this one after all after I get all that oxidization cleaned up thanks for joining me over here for the little interruption on the carb rebuild do not open with a sharp object well I did but I made sure there was nothing in the way and what was it well you guys saw the stack of manuals that I had there was one that I didn't find and that was the one from my CB125 so this one covers 100 through 350 cc overhead single 69 to 82 and it is a brand spanking new climber never been opened or used how awesome is that so that goes into the stack then David did tell me that he had something that was going to be sent out I uh, didn't make it into town yesterday but I did today, stopped off the post office box, and lo and behold, here it is. So let's see what David had to send me. I uh, opened it up, I'm opening it upside down just to hide the, uh, <coughs> excuse me, just to hide the address label, because I keep the address labels from everybody. Oh, I see wood. Another cheese box, it's a big blue moon cheese box. Sweet number six. That's a big one. How about that? Right on. David, hit the nail on the head. That is fantastic. Five pound net weight. And it looks like it's been well used as, as a parts bin, which is what a lot of them get used as. And they're obviously sturdy enough boxes to last decades. David, thank you. Sweet, sweet, sweet. We've got something else down here. Let's see what this, what we got here. We got a bubble wrap envelope and a note. Let me see. Oh, okay. <laughs> there are a lot of. Uh, it's a, it's a good long note. So I'm just gonna read it for myself here <clears throat> but he says it's a motorcycle tag that he found when he was mowing and he heard a clunk so let's see what we got what kind of carnage we have last time it was registered was in 71 how about that that's awesome David thank you if I lived in Ohio and I had a 1971 motorcycle, I could legally put this on as the historic plate. How cool would that, would that have been? Fantastic. David, thank you so, so much. I am going to save the note and make sure that we didn't miss anything. We didn't miss anything. Awesome. So I got a plate and another cheese box. This cheese box thing's not getting out of hand, but it's just it's just neat how I wound up with one cheese box from uh, David Ackerman, 1967. Go check out his channel. Does a lot of excuse me uh, mower repairs, but he started it, and now everyone's sending me their cheese boxes. I'm gonna end up with Guinness Book of World Records collection of cheese boxes. And this will go up on the wall post haste. You did a good job of straightening it out, too. I don't have to do any straightening. I can just nail it right up there. <clears throat> David, thank you very, very much. Now, back to our regularly scheduled programming, working on that carburetor. Boy, it sure is quiet in here. And I'm not doing anything that's going to make any noise. I want to address the audio just real quick while we're taking care of things, chasing the threads in the carburetor. Um, this microphone setup, I've got to blame it on GoPro, and I'm going to contact them and see what can be done to resolve it. 
what happens is the USB-C connector that plugs into the camera itself that you have to have in order to use an external microphone doesn't maintain a good contact and then I lose audio and of course it's my own brain that keeps forgetting to face the microphone in the direction that I am at on the phone whether I'm or on the camera whether I'm facing the camera or behind the camera so right now I've got the orientation correct so <clears throat> what's my alternative is getting a dual microphone to plug into the adapter securing the adapter to the GoPro with something this is my temporary fix securing the GoPro to the adapter with something so that I don't lose audio because I lost a lot of audio on the little six horse Briggs um, you guys can see here I got everything cleaned out you can see the light on this hole here and that light is for and I don't know how well it'll show up but I told you guys that there's a little hole here that hole is right there I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it but there's a tiny little hole there you got to make sure that air can or that fuel can get into that and again this surface and this surface are your imperative mating surfaces when the carburetor is assembled so I just chased the threads the hole for the seat I checked the function of it and I've got the needle to where it just falls in and out I'm hopeful that it will shut the fuel off if it doesn't not a problem I can use a different lower or a different I, I'll figure it out I'll figure it out but my hopes is that that, that it'll work okay uh, this is the hokey little gasket that was used and you can see there's a lot of area there I may just trim this one or no nope, it's all boogered up I'll make a new gasket for that and I'll do that in a different video, but I'll show you guys a trick on how to make gaskets the easy way. So we're at the assembly process right now, but we do have an issue. You see that needle? You see that big ridge that's on that needle? No bueno. No good at all. That is the last thing that you want to put into your carburetor because you will never get it adjusted right. So get a new one and that's what I've done picked through my part stash and got a good one assembly is quite simple on these carburetors and I did a three-part series many 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 moons ago that uh, has been viewed tens of thousands of times that has helped a lot of people out so watching me assemble this carburetor right now um, probably isn't really necessary I just put the little spring keeper on there so that it will hold to the fuel bowl and I'm going to show the fuel bowl leveling process and then we will just cut to this carburetor being completed as soon as I get that to fall the way it's supposed to there it goes see how it's just dangling there then I can just set it down in there just like so and stick my pin in which I have right here the silence is deafening <laughs> All right. I'm not holding my tongue right <clears throat> that springs getting in the way get out of the way spring get out of the way spring and if you guys can see the keeper spring is just fighting me and getting in the way I gotta get out of you aggravating little spring thank you 
You just got to get loud with them every once in a while, I guess, huh? All right, poke it in. Now, once you get it in like that, you can see that the nose is too low. You want this, when sitting on a flat surface, you want that float to be perfectly level. So how do you remedy that? That remedy is quite simple. That metal tab that we just put the needle on, that little metal tab down there, just bend it one way or the other to achieve your proper float angle. And I'm going to set this one a little bit high so that on the on this side so that I'm sure that I have a good seal. So I will cut away. I'm going to come back. This will be all together. We'll throw it on Mini Lord. See if we can get this old crusty carburetor to work. So stay tuned. Okay, moment of truth. Will this nasty carburetor come back to life? This is the one that was on that I had taken from the other engine. And you guys might notice my tensioner nut broke off into about four pieces when I took the carburetor off. This is the one that had the floppy choke on it. I have my hemostats on there. And Mr. Bruce Pender up north is loving his hemostats too. He just commented on that uh, on my last video. So without any further ado, let's see if this sucker's going to come to life with the rebuilt, highly oxidized carburetor. Three, two, one, contact somewhere. Let's find a spot. Get the choke. Ouch, that's hot. Do we have spark? help if I turn the fuel on, huh? Let's turn the fuel on. Maybe that'll help. And if the audio's crap on this, I am getting rid of this Rode microphone. Right, let's try again. Now let's see if this thing will move under its own power for the first time in who knows how many years. ugly carburetor came back to I lost my gas can it moves under its own power it's now officially a moving running tractor that's only been sitting for two years waiting on its chance of course I got stuff to finish up on it um, somewhere in the course of two years I do have the belt cover that is somewhere 
and I also have the uh, adjusting arm that clamps to this side of the starter generator. This uh, belt is too short. It needs a longer belt on it, but I'm happy. It runs. It drives. How about that? And the high-low works. Sweetness. All right. Here's the project done, getting that carburetor to come back to life. I really was not hopeful at all. And if I don't have audio on this, you guys have no idea how irritated I'm going to be. Because then I'll have to do this all over again. That's it. If you guys like this, Mini Lord is finally moving under its own power. I've only got two bolts holding the engine out because it's got to come back out to get cleaned up. Um, if you liked it, give me a thumbs up. And again, Dave, thank you very, 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 very much for the beat up motorcycle plate and the cheese box. Very, very, very cool. Sorry, I had to walk away for a second. Um, I may still go ahead and put an oil bath air cleaner on there because Mini Lord is what I want it to be. It's a 64 Broadmoor. And the reason I'm using this tank instead of this one, this one needs cleaned out pretty bad. So guess what I'm going to use? I'm going to use that rust reformer that I used on Big Bill's tank. Yes, sir, I am. Okay, gang. Mini Lord. Moving under its own power. Happy camper. Zippo's a happy camper. Thumbs up for me. We'll see you guys on the next one.